Hello, and welcome back to Sir You're Being Hunted, with me, Will, continuing on our adventures in the very real English countryside. I was desperately attempting to tell you guys some stories about E3 last time, whilst intermittently having my sphincter nearly uh, divorce the rest of my body due to gut-wrenching fear. So, I'm going to be uh, continuing my adventures across the English countryside, and hopefully you guys will, will stay a while and listen. I'm going to at least attempt to tell you guys tales of the games industry as we set forth uh, through brush and through undergrowth on, ta on search of adventure and not horribly dying. Last time we managed to acquire quite a collection of weapons and equipment. We're actually veritably swimming in it, which if any of you have played an ever like a serious roguelike will know that that's the worst position to be in because that's just before it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. Ooh, matches. Let's swap those out for disgusting food that we will never eat. So, yes. What did I talk about last time? I talked about loving E3. I talked about it being uh, more of a trade show than a convention. So don't feel too bad if you don't get to attend E3, at least not in the, the interim, because sometimes it's much more fun to watch the incredible stuff that comes out of it than it is to attend. For those that go to E3, it's a lot of work. It's the biggest event in the calendar for that respect, and there's a lot riding on it. It's not just a case of uh, will they or won't they, uh, the fans that attend, enjoy the things that I put forward. There are a lot of... Nice, I got a map. Cool. Uh, do I want to take the map? Got a lot of bandages. Got a lot of stout. Oh, let's have a drop of sherry, shall we? Delicious. Um... Oh, God, I, I want to apologise to everyone now that my character is steaming drunk. Oh, this is going to make my life very difficult. Christ in a bin. This was literally the worst idea. All right, well, we'll just continue off into the, the countryside and try and avoid anything that involves skill or tactically aiming a gun. So, yeah, I guess I thought on this little episode I'd talk to you guys more about... Being a community manager, you know, the things that I do and have done, what it entails to be a community manager, and some of the nonsense that pops up along the way. I'm going to try and raid that village at the same time. So, for those of you that may have missed the last episode, a quick recap. Um, I was a QA tester back in the Halcyon days of... Oh, that's a lot of candlesticks. Oh, and a cracked teapot. Um, cracking a teapot with a Union Jack on it is a serious crime in the UK, so... You know, that just helps to paint a picture of what kind of apocalyptic wasteland we are surviving in. As such things would never be allowed to happen under, you know, Her Majesty's rule. The Queen, who, uh, as we all know, uh, can never be stopped and never be destroyed. Not by human means. So yes, uh, I originally started off as a QA tester over at the Creative Assembly before meeting um, Craig Laycock, who was... Uh, who was a good friend who would go on to become my boss who brought me on board uh, to make video content at CA and then uh, would later bring me on to his community manager oh shit the bed shit alright that's one. Oh fuck coming around sorry come on come on what are you doing there's three of them oh I shipped it uh oh I shipped it Jesus Ha <laughs> I am the robot slayer. Oh piss. Oh double piss. Didn't acquire any useful ammo from them. Well, let's hope we can find a MacGuffin of hunting. Now the area's clear, I can at least use my torch. We haven't found any pieces of the MacGuffin to get home either. Okay, so yes. Uh, I worked with uh, Craig Laycock. And I didn't have any formal training in community management before that time. So 
I got taught a lot of it um, on the fly, I guess is the, the best way to describe it. So things like how best to handle um, social media and things like, nope, 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 nope. Uh, so how best to handle social media and things like that um, was stuff that I got taught, how to run a social media campaign, marketing and things like that. I, I picked up from the, uh, the illustrious and um, uh, slightly overpowered uh, Becky Attard, who uh, shout out and brand things from uh, Rob Bartholomew and Kerry West. So I basically had kind of like a, a Batman style origin stories of being a CM. I was surrounded by an incredible team of people and they were all very cool. And from them, I would learn my craft. Um, for the most part, I handled things like outreach and video making. So I would find cool people for us to either make videos with or to hang out with or people who knew a lot about history. I will admit I didn't find nearly as many cool history people as found us. So I don't want to claim that I was some kind of supreme badass when for the most part they found me. But, oh God, where's the next MacGuffin? We're living in a MacGuffin free world and I am not okay with that. Oh shit, pigeons, uh, uh, pheasants. One of the most deadly creatures that one can find in the south of England. Christ, see, he bloody heard the bloody pheasants. Sorry. Being a community manager is a fascinating profession because like a lot of things in the games industry, there's a core set of skills that you need, like knowing how to handle engagement, knowing how to uh, interact with fans, talk to them, knowing how to run an event definitely helps, even if it does give me uh, the most amount of stress. But uh, for the most part, it's a role that changes completely dependent on the company you're at. Uh, if you're working at like a mobile company or a game, or a game company that's entirely indie, if you're working at someone that only makes uh, online products, be it like MMOs or free to play titles or games as service, then you're gonna have a very, very different job from someone who say is a community manager for a AAA game or someone who works for uh, an international company where the game is being made overseas and oh, I think we've just gone around in a big sodding loop. Oh, oh, I know what that is. It's a piece of MacGuffin. Um, someone who works for a part of an international company. So if you're representing a product that has been made in another country, you're going to be talking to either the publisher or the developer about how they want you to interact with fans, how they want to, you to represent their game and it can be a real challenge. So, yeah, community management's a fascinating, a fascinating tiny field. It's not even a tiny field, it's a proper field, sorry. It's one of those things that, I mean, Christ, only four or five years ago, most people would have put community management down as, and sometimes you play around on the forums and talk to people. Uh, these days, it's anything from you know, being essentially a full-time on-staff content creator, making videos for YouTube or Twitch streams, or being a, a social media banter master. Uh, and banter master is now my new favorite term. Uh, I'm gonna have to handle these. Sorry about this. That's one. They call me the robot slayer on account of killing robots. I do love how they say lost the bugger. It's a very English turn of phrase. Ooh, blackberries. Oh, thank, thank, thank the queen herself that that's only a tiny thing and not a monstrous thing that I have to handle. Because that would be very troublesome to try and get that back. Uh, what can we consume? A delicious jar of jam. So that's one. No ammo though, that would have been um, splendid. So yes, uh, what's fascinating is also seeing how people tackle the same problem in different ways. Um, I have great admiration for the Warframe team who do full live streams on top of video content, on top of talking to the fans on their forums. 
It's a lot of work, let me tell you, and they do it really well. I can't talk... Christ on a bin. Uh, I can't talk too much about um, the Creative Assembly and the Total War team and how they operate because it's it's not the done thing. One doesn't talk about uh, the, the previous studio you worked in. Even if you have only nice things to say about them and their games, it's just... Uh, yes. So, who else does some stupendous things? Who else has challenges? Um, uh, a very good friend of mine works as a, as a CM at Nintendo. And you can imagine that that's a very, very different environment to work in than, say, uh, an indie team. As a very good friend of mine works as a, well, I guess an everything man at a, an indie publisher. And he organises uh, events and stands. He, uh, he ropes together a combination of devs and... and uh, and publisher types to help out on the stand. So, you know, the kinds of individuals who are making, you know, decisions about multi-million dollar video games are also the same people, you know, shaking hands and telling you all about, you know, particular video games and how wonderful they are. And I really like that. There's a lot more buggers out in the out in the world. I could we could try and head back and go and dump this, which I don't think is a terrible idea. I just have to remember how in the Sam Hill I find the boat again. Oh, look, there's an indicator. Brilliant. Uh, sorry, being rather dense. Um, whereas you can imagine that someone who works for a publisher of an international studio would have real challenges. Um, you want to make sure that it's the you're saying things in the manner that your developer wants you to, and conversing. Oh, whiskey. Oh, I'm going to use it. Wait, so my guy's got more of a tolerance for whiskey than sherry. Interesting. Oh, please don't let there be robots. I'm far too drunk for this now. Ugh. All right, new rule. I'm not going to drink booze unless it's absolutely life-threatening. Because uh, I do feel for you guys back at home having to watch me stumble drunk around. Although if you ever meet me on a night out at PAX, you can certainly see that in live action. I could have sworn I saw some... Oh, oh, you see it? I see it. Little plume of smoke. We're going to do it. We're going to get it. It's a shame that it's getting light, though. It's going to be trickier to take those guys down. Hmm. So I haven't really told you guys anything useful about how to be a community manager. Um, what most people say is if it's a, a field that you're interested in, is first get involved. And what they mean by that is find a, a game that you love or... Uh, something within the, the wonderful sphere of nerd culture and get absolutely stuck in so that you can think about the parts of it that you really enjoy and you can think about the interactions that you like and then you can think about how best to help other people have the same experience. For me, and this is showing both my age and my sadness, uh, I was part of an Ultima Online uh, roleplay server. So this was a great many years ago of staying up late and... Yeah, this is during a time in my life that I refer to as the Baron years. And, uh, oh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. I played a Kensi Swordsman, which is a no-armor class with a katana. So I, I went full, full samurai fanboy. But what was fascinating was that the interactions in-game and on their forums were one and the same. It was all part of one big ecosystem. If you made splendid comments on the forums during the day... Oh... Not today, jerk face. Sorry. We'll continue this in just a second. Oh, God. Come on. How you like me now? How you like me now? Ah. Oh. Would be, it would be slightly more sporting if these guys wouldn't keep getting their guns wrecked. Which is probably due to me shooting them in the face. Anyway. I should probably try and shoot them anywhere else. Oh, come on! No one's going to drop anything useful. Oh, you know this is going to be a... M oh, okay. Um, do we ditch the axe? No, let's ditch all this booze. Because every time I drink it, I end up wonky donkey. 
and no one enjoys watching someone being wonky donkey on the internet. That thing looks terrifying and I'm not going bloody near it. Let's make sure we're all nice and reloaded. And we got a sodding axe. Right. Where was I? Yes. So I played a, an Ultima Online LARP server. Uh, well, roleplay server. And through the interactions with that was how I knew... I knew from my experiences how best to interact with people online, especially in text format. With the video content stuff, I guess, I just started making the kind of things that I liked watching. And, you know, I've always enjoyed making video content, uh, like every child who grew up during the jackass phase. Like, I made a complete tit of myself on video camera several times over. Uh, Lord knows where all that footage is sitting now, probably on little cassette tapes somewhere in my flat. But, you know, it taught me a lot about video making and the kinds of stuff that I enjoyed doing. So when Craig turned around and went, hey, I need somebody to, to make a few videos, it was like, oh, okay, I can, I can get involved in this. This is something I can do. Okay. Looking at my teeny tiny English pocket watch, that tells me that uh, that is a, another episode in the can. So thank you once more for watching. It's been positively splendid to traverse the English landscape with your, with your good selves. I'm going to hop in that boat and then consider dropping off the next two pieces of the puzzle. And I hope you'll join me again for another episode of Extra Play. Thank you.